Hey guys, I hope you had an amazing week. I want to invite all of you to get up on your feet, wiggle around, and get ready for some worship. Let's go.
Okay, friends, before you sit down, let's go ahead and review our motions for our remember verse that we learned last week. Okay, you ready to do it with me? Here we go. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever. All right, and remember where that's found? It's found in Psalm 136, 12. Great job. All right, now a way that I that helps me remember verses is I will just write the verse on a post-it note and put it in places that I know I'm going to see over and over and over again. Like maybe you're gonna see your school notebook a lot. You can just slide it in the cover there. And you know, we're all doing a little bit of distant learning these days. So maybe you even wanna use your laptop and just put it right there, right there on your laptop. So maybe it's just something that you can look at and remember, and remember that God's love is always with you. All right, friends, so keep practicing that verse and let's go ahead and head on over to our lesson. Bye. Hey guys, today helping me tell our story once again is Mr. John. Thank you for coming today to help me. So did you have fun last time? Is that why you agreed to come again? No. No. Oh. Well, Are you going to make me eat stuff No. Again? No? No snacks today. Okay. I'm nice today. What's in oh, your good. hand? It's a cotton ball. Oh, we'll get to that. So today we're going to focus on how God never fails. Never, Like he doesn't ever. have to study? Or he does study so well and he doesn't fail? I mean, I'm sure if God took a test, he would know all the answers. Oh, true. But never fails like he never breaks a promise. He'll never oh, fail okay. his people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... In the book of Joshua, which is where our story takes place, there is a verse in chapter 21, verse 45, and it says, Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Every one was fulfilled. God never fails. He is faithful. He keeps his promises to his people. So let's look back at last week's story before we get into this week's. After the Israelites built the tabernacle, which was like a big tent, okay. God's presence... They went camping? I mean, kind of in the wilderness. They had to move and they had a tent. But like God's presence was in That's the tent. That's when they ate the manna. Yeah. You remember the manna? Of course I do. Was it good? Mm, sure. <laughs> so God's presence came down and dwelled among the people. What did it look like when God's presence came down? Here's a hint. Whoop. Cotton balls. No, it wasn't cotton balls. This oh. is a hint. Oh. <laughs> Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> you came down like a cloud? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, he was like a cloud in the wilderness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then was he like fire too? Um, At night? Well, yeah, when he was leading them. But when his presence was in the tabernacle, it was like a cloud, not sheep. <laughs> okay. So, yes, a cloud covered the tabernacle. And when the cloud lifted from the tabernacle, the people started traveling again. And oh, the they're cloud, out of quarantine? They didn't have quarantine. Oh, okay. They were just traveling. They were wandering. Okay, okay, okay. So if the cloud stayed put, what did the people do? What Take do you a think? Nap. Um, sure, but it meant that God was like, okay, you're going to stay here. Oh, this okay. is where I'm stopping for okay. you to stop. I would take a nap if we stopped. I mean, if you stopped, yes. But the point was, it was where God wanted them to stop. Right. And then they could take a nap. Okay. So when the cloud stayed put, the people stayed put too. God came to his people and stayed with them always. He never, ever failed the Israelites. And as God led the Israelites, where was he leading them to? A land filled with milk and honey. And it was called? Very sticky. Nope. <laughs> the God made a promise to them to give them a land. Mm -hmm. And it was called the? Land of promise. Other way around. The promised Test land. Morp. So into the promised land, that's where God was leading them. And long before the desert, God promised Abraham that he would give Abraham's family members, the Israelites, a land in which to live. That's the promised land. Gotcha. So the Israelites were ready to be in their home. After all, they'd spent 400 years as slaves in Egypt. That's a long time. So John, have you ever missed home after being away on a trip? Yep, especially the dogs. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you guys miss your pets when you're gone? Yeah. yeah. Um, so home is a place where you can rest, be with your family, be with your friends, and you can feel comfortable to be yourself because you feel safe at home. So God promised the Israelites a home for all of these reasons and more. Even better, in their promised home, they would be free to worship God and free to raise their children to worship Him too. And God never fails His people. He would keep His promise and give them their home. 
So despite the fact that God never, ever failed, the older generation, including Moses, were not allowed to enter the land. Instead, the younger generation would go into it. So the older generation, they didn't trust God. They didn't trust that he was going to lead them. So God mm. was like, you know what? We're just going to let the younger ones go. So even though Moses led Israel across the desert, God told a man named Joshua that mm. he would be the one to bring the people into the promised land. Oh. Yeah. God commanded Joshua to be the type of leader that always remembers God's laws. Mm, it's a good leader. So could you grab the Bible, please? Mm. <laughs> Why are you sad to grab the Bible? Bible servants. It's the Word of God. The Adventure Bible. We're going on an adventure. And can you open to the book of Joshua, please? No, I opened to Isaiah. That's well, funny. we're not in Isaiah. Right now. <sighs> First Samuel. Dude, nope, nope, this way. This way. Joshua. So we're going to be looking at chapter one. Oh, <laughs> the first chapter. Flip, 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 flip. And verses seven and nine. Can you read those for me? I am fully capable of reading seven. Reading? reading. <laughs> Apparently not. Maybe not speaking. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. When you will be prosperous, then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Yep. So in this verse, it talks about the book of the law, and that means God's commandments or his word. So Joshua's job as the leader wasn't to plan battle strategies for taking over the land because God himself was going to do that for them. Mm. Joshua's task was to read God's word and think through the laws that God gave to his people. He was to study. Okay. Yeah. So what did God tell Joshua so to do? So he couldn't fail. Who couldn't fail? Joshua. Because he studied. Because God was with him. Yeah. And God well, said, do this and I'll be with you. And mm -hmm. I'm going to lead you into the land. I'm going to conquer it for you. Oh. Yeah. So. Did Joshua even have to do anything? I mean, yeah, but mm. he knew that God was in control. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So what did God tell Joshua to do several times in these verses? Be strong and courageous. Yeah, be strong and courageous. God wanted Joshua to remember to be strong and courageous. Joshua spent time reading God's word and thinking through it. What else do you suppose God told Joshua to do? Be strong and courageous. <laughs> so, yes, but in verse 2, God told Joshua that the people would cross a river to enter the promised land. Oh. I'm going to make a river right now. Oh. Doo -doo -doo. This might be loud. Also on the floor. <laughs> oh. I've got a river by flowing out of the Ah, there's more. These there's the water. Like rocks. This is not a river. Pretend. Is that what it, the sound it makes? Yep. I'm parting the river. I'm Not God. Yet. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's our river. Do you know what river he told them that they had to cross? The Mediterranean. No. That is a sea. Yep. <laughs> so you're, you're way off there. The Mississippi. That's in America. The Jordan. Yes. <laughs> So the Israelites followed God through the desert. They got closer and closer to their home. And finally, the only thing separating them from the promised land was the Jordan River. Oh, hey, mm. hey there. Watch it. Don't mess with the water yet. Yeah, can't cross. So what do you think the Israelites thought when they saw the river standing in their way? Do you they think... walked on the water. No, that's Jesus. Because they had Jesus. faith in Jesus. <laughs> they didn't know Jesus yet. Oh. He didn't come yet. So do you think they planned to swim across? How would you swim across? I would swim... Doggy paddle. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, there was a problem. Mm. The water was really, really high. Oh. <laughs> and the river was wider than normal, probably like a mile wide. Whoa, that's really wide. That's really wide. And the rushing river was rougher and deeper because of the extra water, maybe even like 10 feet deep. That's, that's like taller than me. Yeah, taller than you. It's about as tall as like a bedroom. So the river was too dangerous to walk or swim through, and there were no boats. So how do you think they were supposed to get across? God. And God. <laughs> so God had a plan to get his people across. He never fails his people, right? So God told them to have the priests carry the Ark of the Covenant and step into the river in front of everyone else. When they did this, 
God would make a way through the river by stopping the river's flow. Whoa. And that's exactly what happened. God stopped the rushing river's flow so that the Israelites could cross into the promised land. Ta-da! They could cross through. <laughs> so do you remember something like this happening at another point? In, in the, the Sea story? of Red, or the Red Sea. The Red Sea, right. So, exactly. God parted the Jordan River like he parted the Red Sea for his people to leave Egypt. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and this mm -hmm. is how all of God's people safely crossed the Jordan River. It's like you bookended it. Yeah, kind of. And then it's just... Can you imagine, like, the water is just building up on both sides of you and you're just walking through on dry land? Hey, fish. Like, that's cool. So, after the water stopped flowing and the people crossed on dry ground, God told Joshua to choose 12 men, one from each tribe, to gather one stone from the middle of the Jordan River and bring it to the other side. So I got some stones here. Whoop. Oh, real stones. Are real stones. Oh, no, there's water. -like this is water. Stones. I don't know if you can see this because they're like the same color as the table. Ta-da! You don't have all 12. Nope, don't. Don't do that. Okay. Nope. Okay. <laughs> stones. So, the stones. And after the men gathered the stones and the people all stood safely on the other side of the river, the water went back to normal. <laughs> so why do you think God had them pick out stones? I actually have no idea. No idea? All oh, right. to build an altar? Uh, no, actually. Oh, so the stones right. were meant to be a reminder to Israel of mm. what God did for them that day. He stopped the river's flow so that they could enter into the promised land. God never fails them. And this was a reminder to them that God never fails. Gotcha. Yep. So they pulled the stones from the river. And although God's people had waited more than 400 years, God still didn't fail them. God Whoa. freed his people from slavery and brought them into their new home. He never fails. So God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he is the same, then he will never, ever fail his people. What types of promises does God give to us? God. That if we believe in his son, we'll go to heaven. Yeah, that is one of his great promises to us. God promises he will never leave us. That when we trust and follow Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we can always know we are never alone mm. because he sends the Holy Spirit to be with us. And one day Jesus will come back and he is preparing a place for us to live with him forever. Whoa. And he loves us no matter what. Though other people will fail us, and sometimes we fail too. I know I fail. Mm -hmm. We can always remember and trust that God will never, ever fail. He will always be with us. He will never fail, and he keeps every promise. And because of this, we can trust him. We can follow him. We can worship him because he is worthy of our praise. So let's pray. And dear God, I just thank you for just this lesson that we can remember, God, that you never, ever fail. And may we just trust that, God, that we know that you are always with us to guide us through whatever may come. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye. No, we have to do our craft. I'm not doing craft. Come back here. Ah. <laughs> okay, guys. So for our craft today, oh, all right. We have a template, hang on, <laughs> like this. It says, God never fails. And what you're going to do is on the two far columns, you're going to color it like the waters of the river, which is what Mr. John is Wait, wasn't it brown, very though? aggressively doing right now. Why is it brown? It's water. It's a gunky river. Fine. Well, if you want to make your water really gross and brown, I guess you can do that. In the two center columns, you're going to color it brown for the sand. Hey, this is mine. So, you already oh, did yours. All right, I already did mine. So you see, I have my water on both sides, my sand in the middle. And then you're going to draw 12 stones on the sand because those are the stones that the Israelites picked up to remember what God had done. So I have my 12 stones in there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take it. You're going to fold it in half like this. And then you're going to take the top part. My arm hurts. You're going to fold it back. And you're going to find that dotted line up here. And you're going to make another crease. So you're going to end up with it looking like this. And so that way you can show that the river is flowing and flowing and flowing and then God parted it so that they could cross on dry land. So I hope you guys have fun. I hope that helps you remember that God never fails and 
remember what God did for his people to get them to the promised land. This is taking forever. I hope you guys have fun and have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye! It's way too fast. <laughs> you can't. Uh, I'm really tempted to throw the rocks off. <laughs> Just a massive sheep was God's presence. <laughs> <laughs> this is God coming down. Hello, people of Israel. I am here. <laughs> and when. <laughs> No, it's not. It's wool. <laughs> <laughs> so when the cloud stopped, the people stayed put too. And okay. God's moving on. <laughs> oh, God. God's all over the place. God's everywhere, guys. <laughs>